And so Psalms 88.1, when you have it, come on and say amen. amen. And the word of God reads, O oh Lord, mm, 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 capital L-O-R-D, God of my salvation, I cry out to you by day. I come to you at night. Now I hear my prayer. Listen to my cry. For my life is full of troubles. And death draws near. I am as good as dead, like a strong man with no strength left. Verse 5 says, For they left me, they have left me among the dead. Been there myself. And I lie like a corpse in the grave. I am forgotten, cut off from your care. Oh Lord. Some of y'all feel like that. Like God don't love you. You feel like you're cut off from your lifeline. You have thrown me into the lowest pit, into the darkest depths. Verse 7 says, your anger weighs me down with wave after wave. You have engulfed me, Selah. You have driven my friends away by making me a repulse to them. I am in a trap with no way of escape. Been there. My eyes are blinded by my tears. Been there. Each day I beg for your help, O oh Lord. Been there. I lift my hands to you for mercy. I've been there. Oh, oh my God. Are your wonderful deeds of any use to the dead? The psalmist say. Do the dead rise up and praise you? He's questioning. Can those in the grave declare your unfailing love? Can they proclaim your faithfulness in the place of destruction? Can the darkness speak of your wonderful deeds? Can anyone in the land of the forgetfulness talk about your righteousness? Oh Lord, I cry out to you. I will keep on pleading day by day. Oh Lord, my God, why do you reject me? Why do you turn your face from me? Have you been there? Mm. I have been sick and close to death since my youth. Oh, this person been battling for a long time. I stand helpless and desperate before your terrors. Your first anger have overwhelmed me. Your terrors have paralyzed me. They swirl around me like flood waters all day long. They have engulfed me completely. You have taken away my companions and loved ones. Darkness is my closest friend. Lord, help me lay your word. Lord, speak. All, if not all, Father God can identify with the pain that the writer of the 88th Division of Psalms is going through, Lord. And if we be truthful, Father God, mm, we stand in need of a face-to-face -face encounter with you tonight. It may be someone, Lord, mm, that's on the verge of tapping out. As Minister Matt and Alvin talked to me, and I heard about the mask. Don't let us hide behind our mask. Father God, don't allow us to suffer in silence. Don't let our, allow us to smile and say everything is all right when we know we're about ready to kill ourselves. Father God, I bind witches. I bind warlocks. And I bind every demon that will come against, Father God, what you're trying to do tonight, Lord. I bind every distraction, even in the airways. I see the enemy is trying to get into the airways and distract. Oh my God, but I thank you, Father God, that all is well, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that somebody came expecting to receive. Father God, an impartation, Lord, from you. Somebody need a touch, Lord. Somebody is reaching horizontal and somebody's faith is reaching vertical, Father God, even on tonight, Father God. So we thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for keen minds and sharp spirits tonight. We thank you for an open heart tonight, Father God. Download in us, Father God. Put in us everything that we need and draw them out of us everything that we don't need, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on and say amen, everybody. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of a holy God, my God. The words of this psalm are heartbreaking. Can anybody identify with the psalm? Okay. 
Who is a man who does not want to continue living his life? Have anybody ever been there? Come on, y'all talk to me. Come on now. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, this man, uh, from what the word said, wants to die. Verse 15 says, I have been sick and close to death since my youth, the psalmist said. I stand helpless and desperate before my terrors. Mm. This is the key verse of this chapter. As God was showing me, my God, this man has been struggling. Mm. As I stated, some theologians say that it was David on the run, my God, but I, I don't know if David uh, been struggling ever since his youth. I know that God called him at a young age, age at 17, and he had to go through some things when he had to fight the giant, but whoever the writer is, my God, he says, I've been struggling with this affliction. I've been battling ever since I was a young person. Are y'all with me so far? And the root of this man's problem stems from his youth. Oh, my God, God wants to go back. Listen to me now. God wants to go back tonight, if you'll let him, to your root system all the way to your youth. You got to let God go back to the root system of your youth and start the process of healing and restoration. Because some of the things, my God, that we're dealing with now as adults, my God, and we can't seem to shake, we can't seem to get over because we got to allow the Spirit of God to trace it all the way back to its root. And a lot of it started in our childhood. Somebody need to talk to me tonight. And so in order for you to get over that thing that make you want to tap out, quit, whatever, my God, you got to say, okay, God, take me back to my childhood. Some of our childhoods are worse, sir, and more painful than others. But at the end of the day, if you're going to heal right, if your foundation is going to be solidified, you're going to have to allow God to search and go back and tap that area, my God, where you was violated, where you was dropped, where you was mishandled. You can't properly grow. You can't properly move forward, my God, without allowing God to heal those areas when you was two and three and four and and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten. You got to deal with it. Are y'all with me so far? Okay. Ah, oh, my God. Whatever the nature of his affliction, he sees it as chastisement of the Lord on his life. Verse seven says, your anger, he says, weighs me down. Mm. With wave after wave, you engulf me. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 16 says, your first anger has overwhelmed me. Your terrorist has paralyzed me, I can identify, I can identify. Mm. We have before us a very, write these words down, defeated, discouraged, and de depressed man. Defeated, discouraged, and depressed man. No gender. Are you defeated tonight in your thinking? Are you, are you discouraged? Are you depressed tonight in any capacity, my God, in your life? And if so, that means God has come to see about you tonight. But you got to let him. You got to let them. Can I help you understand that a lot of our uh, discouragement and, and depression uh, stems back to our youth? I got to be honest. Some of the painful decisions that we're making as adults, my God, uh, my God, because we was mishandled and we was violated and we wasn't loved, my God, when we was youth, my God. So we searching for stuff that we didn't get when we was young. And so, therefore, that's why we allow men to mishandle us. That's why men, my God, we, we, we go from woman to woman, womanizing, my God, because we never had an example in our homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of that stuff that we are dealing with, my God, as a people in the church, my God, stems all the way back to our youth. So I need us to be open to allow God to go back to that place where you've been vulnerable. Go back to that place, my God, that still make you cry. Go back to that place that you have went up in the attic of your mind and tried to close off that you don't even want to let God get to. That's the place that God is coming out of tonight. How many of y'all want to move forward in your life? Oh, my God, you're going to have to allow God to do, do something in your life. My God, back in your youth, my God. Let's look at some more things that this man is going through. Watch this. And if you can identify God is talking to you, Number one thing that he is dealing with is he believes he has no future. Verses 3 and 4 says, my life is full of troubles and death draws near. I am as good as dead, he says, like a strong man with no strength left. Let me help you with something. To be without hope is devastating. Write that down. To be without hope is devastating. Oh, my God, I've been in hopeless situations. Uh. Oh, my former life and my former addiction, man, took me to the hopeless situations, my God, where at times I wanted to die. At times I didn't feel like I even wanted to live. I've been there. I can identify. Oh, my God. But I think about Abraham, Michelle. The Bible says, against all hope, yet in hope. Watch the termination. I'm trying to take my time. Uh, against all hope, 
everything was against Abraham. The Bible says, yet in hope, he believed God. So, so, so if, if you're here tonight and, and, and you're living with a, in a, uh, without hope, you're in a bad place. But God has need of you tonight. God have need of you tonight. You can get that fixed if you want to. But this man, my God, in the scripture, my God, has no future. He feel like. I thought, write this down, write this down. He believes he has no friends. Been there too. Verse 8 says, you, you have driven my friends away by making me a rep repulsive to them. I am in a trap with no way to escape. Write this word down. Loneliness is a killer. Oh, don't you know you can have a, be sitting in a crowd like this and still be lonely? Some of you are right now. You're lonely. That's why we find ourselves getting involved in stuff in our private life, my God, because we're searching, our God, for fulfillment in the wrong areas. That's why we find ourselves getting entangled with the yoke of bondage, again, because we're searching for stuff, my God, uh, because we're lonely. And if you're a single man, uh, you're a single woman, uh, you got to be careful what you go to surfing. Also, what you're going to search for. Mm -hmm. Because as men, we are hunters. We look for prey. I can't get nobody to say nothing. And when a, when a lion finds his prey, my God, it kills his prey. And then it growls. And then it take what it wants. Then it walk off and leave the rest. Y'all missed that. When a lion uh, uh, searches and stalks, my God, his prey, Sister Johnson. Uh, when a lion gets his prey, he kills the prey. And then he eats, I take what he wants. Key word, eats, I take. What he want from and leave the rest and say you can have my leftovers. Are you somebody's leftover tonight? Because he was up on Facebook, my God, and he sent you a message. And you lonely. And so therefore you entertain that because he put some fake body on there with some six packs and all that. But that ain't who he really looked like. Or he gave you some of those Billy D words and he enticed you because you're lonely. Be careful when you're lonely. This man right here felt lonely. You could be in the midst of a crowd like this. I promise you, it's somebody, if not a half of this church, right now tonight, my God, is dealing with the spirit of loneliness. That's why we have compromised and let people in that shouldn't be in. Are y'all with me so far? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's look at another thing. He believes that he has no foundation. And this is critical right here. Oh, when I looked in the scripture, he feels that, no, that he has no hope and nothing to hold on to. He believes, that, he believes that, that even all he's reaching out to the Lord, all he's reaching out to the Lord has been in vain. Have you ever felt like no matter what you do, no matter how long you try to live right, no matter if you read and pray, whatever you try to do for us, God, it just seems like ain't no return on him. Has anybody ever been there? You're praying, you're studying, you're trying to pray, you're, try, you're trying to do everything right, but just like ain't nothing happened. He was there, no foundation. You think about foundation. You can't build up if the foundation ain't solid. Are you with me? See, see, a lot of us want things and want God to build our life up vertical, but he's trying to work on the foundation. That's why certain things is painful. One thing that I know about going off of Christ Church, going off of Christ ministers, and these, it starts off, my God, dealing with the foundation. See, 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 before you can go up high, you got to dig low. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And so God don't want to take you high, my God, when he know that stuff in your youth ain't been dealt with, my God. And so if you go high and that stuff from your youth come up, my God, now you got problems. Think about foundation. You need a strong foundation so God can drop some weight on you. You can't put no weight on no shaky foundation, baby. You can't put no weight on somebody that ain't got their mind made up that they're going on to see what the end of a say life going to be like. Oh, my God, God can't give you no major responsibility in the kingdom, my God, if he know you're going to squander away what he gave you. He can't truly reveal your purpose and your potential to you if, you know you ain't, if he know you ain't ready to handle it. My God, going home for Christ deals with the internal. Jesus said, my God, the kingdom of heaven is within. Yes, sir. See what I'm trying to say? The scribes and Pharisees, my God, in the New Testament, they focus on external. What it look like. They made sure they sit right. They made sure they was dressed right. Come on, somebody. They made sure they say all the right prayers, my God. They made sure they stood right. Come on, they had a whole lot of mask on, and Jesus saw right through it. And so one thing I want you to know, this is just a side note, one thing I want you to know and remember people of God and those that's online looking, going over Christ, deal with the internal. That's why it's painful and that's why many shipwreck. <laughs> Come on somebody. That's why many of them tap out, my God, because we don't want God to deal with that youth. <laughs> we don't want God to hit that cavity, my God. Think about a cavity. It's painful, my God. When the, hit, when, when the wind hit that cavity, it's painful, my God. Going over Christ, deal with the pain because we deal with internal stuff, not external stuff. Somebody give God a hand, my God. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Even when the Spirit of God is preaching, my God is dealing with internal stuff, my God, not external. That's why we're not running around jumping and shouting because God is doing surgery on the inside. Because God said, I want you healthy. He said the healthiness of a tree is internal more than it is external. If you look at the fruit, my God, it's called the internal of it is healthy. The root system is healthy. Foundation in the natural in, in this time, has, when I'm in relation to the scriptures, dealing with the root system. God also trying to go up into that area of our mind and deal with our mind. That's foundation. The Bible says it's with the mind that you and I serve God. So if your mind is messed up, guess what? Your life is going to be messed up. This man felt like I ain't got no foundation. I'm reaching out to God. I ain't got no hope. I done lost all hope. His foundation is gone. He's ready to give up, y'all. He's ready to quit. He's in a bad place. But I don't want to get stuck there. Watch this. He also believes that he has no faith. I told y'all yesterday, everything that we're going, I mean Sunday, everything that we're going through, every attack, every trial, every setback, all that stuff, the enemy is trying to rob us of our faith. Because whoever get the faith, get the life. Just like I tell y'all, whoever get the mind, get the life. See what I'm trying to say? As a man think it, you become. So, my God, if you have no faith, you will have all hope. Pity the man. Paul said, if all we got to look forward to is this life, pity us. Where your faith at tonight? I taught you, many of you believe in God and asking God for stuff, but he can't do it because you got the wrong people in your life. If he give it to you, they're going to rob you of it. They're going to interfere with you. Come on, somebody. So he'll just withhold. So you got to check your score. You got to check your circle. Make sure you ain't got no contamination. Make sure you ain't got no compromise. Make sure you ain't got no sinful relationships in your life because it hinders, my God, what God want to do in your life. See, all that's foundational stuff. That's all foundational stuff. Check your circle. Make sure you ain't got no sinful relationships in your life because you're asking God for stuff, but God don't bless sin. Yeah, that's it. That's it. He that's will it. delay. Come on. He won't deny, but he'll delay. With the opportunity for you and I, that's what mercy come in here, to repent. Yeah. Repent means turn from and turn to. Mm-hmm. See what I say? Don't think because ain't nothing happened. Don't think because he ain't revealed. Don't think because he ain't exposed. Oh, my God, that he just going to let you stay in your sin and, you know, and, and, and fake the funk as we say in the natural. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He, he, he going to send warning like he just did just now. Warning before destruction. So we got, we, we, not you, we got to make decisions. See what I say? Because are we hindering? God doing what we asking him to do because we got the wrong circle of friends, of companions. Okay, y'all don't believe me? Write down 1 Corinthians 15, 33. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It says, don't be fooled by those who say such things. Bad company corrupts good character. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. You can't go up with the wrong company. Have you ever been here before? Have you ever been here? Have you ever, and are you dealing with anything that the Spirit of God has just said? Is anybody by the showing of hands Dealing with any one of those things God just said. So I guess everybody else is sanctified. <laughs> and that's good. Maybe you're in this place right now, or maybe you are some, or someone else you may know, someone you may know has fallen into deep despair. I just want to point out a few things. Write this down right quick. Step number one. Point number one. My God, uh, this is what he did. I want to teach you something. When you get to the point where you feel like quitting, when you get to the point where you feel like God is nowhere around, he didn't forgot about you, when you feel like everybody done walked out on you, lied on you, and all your friends is gone and all that stuff. Can I help you understand something? Ooh, it's so painful what I'm supposed to say, but it's truth. Sometimes God got to allow everybody to walk out your life and you to be alone so he can get your attention. Some of you, God can't really speak to a lot of us because we got too much noise. We got too many voices. We got too many distractions. That's why I taught y'all months ago or however long ago, death by distraction. We too distracted. God will let everybody leave you. And when you get all alone, now you're crying. Nobody loved me. Everybody turned their back on me. When I had all my friends, when I wasn't no Christian, when I was partying, smoking dope, and doing all this stuff, I had everybody. Well, you thought you did. Don't be fooled. For 1 Corinthians 15, 30, don't be misled. Because when you stand up, my God, and you leave darkness and come to the light, you find out who your real friends is. See, you can't be afraid to clip. Well, I'll be teaching y'all. 
You can't be afraid to shift. You can't be afraid to reposition yourself. You see what I say? Some of us, my God, we got the wrong people in our lives because we operating and in relationship because of broken people. Been broke, broken, broken relationship, broken wounds, broken wounds. We, we got wrong people in our life because we got wounds. We're broken. And so we attract into our life our most dominant thoughts. Yeah. Broken people attract broken people. As they say, hurt people hurt people. Wounded people attract wounded people. That's why I told y'all a little bit Sunday, my God, before I got into the sermon, my God, oh my God, pe people that's been through pain, they tend to fellowship with people who've been through pain because they understand each other. That saying, birds of the feather flock together, that's real talk right there, even in the church house. Come on, people that's been molested and dropped women, my God, and, and rejected and all that stuff, they tend to navigate to those people that can identify. That's real. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hang around nobody that don't understand me because they'll judge me. I don't need to be around nobody that don't understand me. Can't be touched, as Jesus said, by my infirmity because they'll look at what I'm going through and they'll judge me. But if you've been through what I've been through, you understand me. Come on, somebody. So when you see me sitting in church, all of a sudden I just break down crying. Eric, look at you. I already know you okay. I've been there too. It's all good. And keep right on pushing. See what I'm trying to say? Quit hanging around people that don't understand you. Yeah. Quit hanging around people that can't identify with you. Quit hanging around people that can't be touched. This Bible by your infirmities. You're trying to make yourself fit with people who can't handle you. You can't, you can't, you can't, everybody can't handle your story. So this, this psalmist, my God, I, I love, I love because, my God, number one, he, he, he maintained his commitment to God even though he felt all alone. Even though he, he felt like he had no faith. Even though his foundation was, was cracked. Even though he felt like he, he was left to die. He maintained, oh my God, his connection to God. Even with all his problems, this man kept on praying. Have you stopped praying? Have you stopped praying? Even in the midst of all of the problems, have you stopped praying? Have you lost hope? Have you given up? Have you told yourself and are you telling yourself, God don't care about me. The church don't care about me. My mama don't care about me. My daddy don't care about me. My boyfriend don't care about me. My kids don't care about me. Yeah, we know all said it. He never stopped praying. He kept his connection. Why did I say that? Because prayer keeps you connected. You stop praying, you lose your connection. Coming to church, that's good, but you got to pray. Uh, you, you're in church, but that don't mean you're connected. Because you could be in church and not be connected. You could be in the vicinity of something, don't mean you're connected to what you at, where you at. Come on, somebody. Prayer keeps you connected. Oh, my God, no matter what you're facing right now, keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. And so I'm going to tell you all this sermon is, Lord, I can't trace you, but I trust you. Lord, I can't trace you, but I trust you. This man, Psalmist, could not trace God. He couldn't, he couldn't, he didn't know what was going on with him. Oh, my God, Lawanya. Oh, my God. Lord, Lord, I can't trace you. I can't see your hands working. I can't see you moving. You ain't talking to me, my God. Oh, I feel left alone. My foundation is all messed up. I ain't got no faith. God, where are you, God? How could you leave me here? He having all this type of stuff going on emotionally. He can't trace him. He can't trace him. Sometimes God got to let us get to that point of despair because he's building you. He's teaching you. He's working on that foundation. Because remember, he, your destiny is already created. My God, he's preparing you for your destiny. So, 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 so all the despair that you're facing ain't got God spooked. God knew you was going to get to the point of despair. He got us right where he want us. Because we need some of that. <laughs> oh, my God. Sometimes despair has a way of pushing you to God instead of away from God. Uh, if we never had any hardships, baby, we probably wouldn't be sitting here right now tonight. But he prayed. He prayed. He kept on praying. My God, write this down up on the point number one. He prayed continually. This is what you got to do as I encourage you. Because I know many of us can't trace him right now. I'm talking about God. So we ain't got nothing else to do but trust him. But this is what you're going to do to keep that trust anchored. I'm talking about anchor. Oh, you got to stay anchored. If not, you're going to drift away. If you don't stay anchored, my God, you're going to lose your connection. If you don't stay anchored, you ain't gonna, you're going to lose your connectivity. If you don't stay anchored, you're going to be spotty. If you don't stay anchored, my God, what used to matter won't matter. You got to stay connected when you're in the midst of trials and tribulations. Oh, my God, when the enemy strike, that's when you need to strike back the most, my God. When you're going through trials and tribulations, you need to push you to God and not away from God. See, we got it all wrong. 
We will quote, it was good for me, Psalms 119, 77. It was good for me that I was afflicted. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But, but, but affliction should push you to God. Affliction should confirm that you in God's will. All affliction ain't bad. All affliction ain't cause you in sin. Oh my God, come on somebody, y'all talk to me, my God. Quit letting your affliction, my God, my God, push you away from God. Let your affliction connect you to God. If you never went through nothing, there'd be no need to pray. Remember, God is trying to work on your foundation. Your foundation starts when you're youth. That's why parents, be careful what you expose your kids to. Be careful what you're letting them listen to. Be careful what you're letting them watch on TV. Quit just giving them iPads. Quit just giving them Android, my God. Because all that stuff popping up. And then, oh, my God, the Bible says never awaken love before it's time. Some of our children, their love been already awakened at four and five years old. And we don't even realize that. The enemy has already bitten our children, my God. And they already got stuff going on in their mind at a young age. And we blaming the devil. No, we blame ourselves. Because we don't want to take time to spend time with them. So, therefore, we give them something to Occupy him. I'm too busy right now. I'm surfing the internet right now, going over there. I need to talk to him. Oh, I got a long distance relationship, so I need to spend some time with him. You go do that. Just handing your kids over to the, and grandkids over to the devil. And stuff is going on you don't even know, right in our homes. When you connect it, God will speak. God will say, don't do that. Go in your son's room. Go in your daughter's room. When he go to sleep, watch his phone. God will speak to you. God is always speaking. God is never not speaking. Anytime you open up the Constitution, he's speaking. When I open up the Psalms 88, my God, God spoke. And I'm giving you what he said. He prayed continually, night and day. First thing, every day, all day. Don't ever give up. Write that down. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up and don't ever stop praying. Don't ever give up and don't ever stop praying. We are told to continue in prayer. That's 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. The Bible says pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians. Pray without ceasing. Continue. Don't stop. Keep bombarding heaven. Keep pushing. Trials, pain, heartache, disappointment, failure, mistakes, setbacks. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep praying. Pray without ceasing. Prayer keeps you, my God, connected to God. Romans 12, 2, write that down. Continue instant in prayer. These are all exhortations from the word of God that tells us how important prayer is to the thriving, growing Christian. Pray without ceasing. Continue in instant in prayer. That means be ready in season. I always be willing to walk around and pray. When you're sitting under the dryer, pray. When you're getting your hair braided, pray. When you're, in, when you're working out, pray. My God, when you're walking around the track, pray. My God, when you're sitting at the table, pray. When you're laying up in the bed, pray. When you're taking a bubble bath, pray. Come on, my God, when you're cutting the yard, pray. When you're washing the car, pray. Whenever you get your toes and nails done, pray. Constant prayer. Don't ever stop praying. Mm, come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm just making it where you understand the scripture. Colossians 4, 2 says, continue in prayer and watch the same with thanksgiving. After you pray, be grateful. Thank you, Lord, that I'm, I'm victorious. Thank you, Lord, that's already done. I call those things that be not as though they are. I know it look bad now, God, but I'm going to trust you even though I can't trace you. Oh, my God, I'm going to stay anchored in. You got to learn how to talk to yourself in the midst of what you're going through, my God. Oh, my God, after you pray, learn how to thank him. See, we'll pray, but we won't thank him because we don't really believe what we just prayed for. We don't believe that he can do it. That's why we don't thank him. We'll come down here and we'll cry and we'll snot, men and women. We'll come down here and we'll pray. We'll talk to God. But then we don't get up and say, Lord, I thank you that that is so. Now just give me the patience to wait to it manifest. Come on, somebody. It is so because if you're praying in faith, my God, God only honors and blesses faith. And if it's his will, my God, and it's his time, that which you and I pray for will manifest. If it's his will and if it's his time. Some of us, my God, ain't praying his will. That's why it ain't nothing happening. You can't pray in the flesh. You got to pray in the spirit, baby. Those that worship me must worship me in spirit and truth. That ain't just worship, clapping. That's, that's your mindset. Oh, I'm giving you. See, this foundational stuff right here, baby. Somebody give God a hand. He prayed with emotions. Write that down. He was emotional. This burden was heavy on this man, and it touched him to his core. Oh, Lord. He was a broken man emotionally. Oh, my God. Uh, 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 I've been uh, That's why I can identify. Certain things hit me because it's, I lived it and still be going through some of it. But I've been broken emotionally. Even though I'm an alpha male 
And I got a lion's heart. Come on, somebody, but I hurt too. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I deal with stuff just like you deal with stuff. Come on, somebody. This man was struggling, Sister Sharon. He was struggling. He couldn't understand because he, 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 he didn't know what was going on. Remember, this started all the way back in his youth. And now he's an adult. And he still don't know what's going on. He probably has some moments and pockets of joy, but it sounds like this man been suffering for a long time, like some of you have been suffering for a long time. And you're saying, God, when? Why? What did I do? Why was I born? Let me die. Let me kill myself. Some of you have tried to do that. You know why you couldn't do it? Because God have need of thee. You have something that the world needs. You have something that your sister and brothers need. That's why you couldn't kill yourself. You wonder how you made it from Bigsby all the way out north, fool of Dominique, and, and, and you didn't have a wreck, and you, and you woke up the next morning, son. Look at me, son. Looking at you, sitting in your driveway, and you tell your, oh, and you tell yourself, my God, oh, my God, how did I get from 170 something in Bigsby all the way out north, my God, and you wake up the next morning in your car and you don't know how you got there. God carried you. The blessing is in remembrance because it wasn't, you weren't supposed to die. What have you been through that should have took you out, but it didn't? And now it's a testimony. But you still ain't sharing it because you don't want nobody to know you've been through it. Some of you have been diagnosed with some of those incurable diseases and God has cured you, but you don't want nobody to know you had it. On, Somebody needs your testimony. Woo, she can't emotion. Ah, he, yes, Lord. This man is emotional. He's an emotional wreck right now. You look real good, man of God, but we got pain. If I got it, I know you got it. If I got it, Mike, I know you got it. I'm talking to my men now. We cover it up. We mask it up, Minister Alvin. You taught it. We got a lot of pain. You have to deal with that emotional pain if you're going to really have a strong foundation in God. You got to deal with it. Quit running from your pain. It's okay to cry. It's okay to come lay out. It's okay to be saying, look here, man, I, I'm missing it right now. It's okay, my God, to say, you know what? I've been a public success, but I'm struggling in private. You got to keep it on a dollar, my God. This man is in emotional pain. Women ain't the only one to deal with emotional wounds. We got them too, man. Every last one of us, including the one with the microphone. But I'm just willing to be real and deal with mine. That's why I share the things I share. I don't be trying to boast. I be trying to help you get free because people need your story. Jesus, my God, Thomas said, I'm not going to believe unless I see the holes in his hands. Show me his side. Show me his feet. That means you got to show somebody your wounds for somebody to get healed. Y'all better read your Bible and quit being scared. You know what I'm saying? I've been on display since I birthed the church. Marriage problems, kids problems, everything problems. Shh. Better ask somebody. Somebody needs your story. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. <laughs> Keyword hand. <laughs> I said hand. I can't get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus. So emotion is a vital part of effective prayer. Put some emotion behind your prayer. Some of you cool men with you low-key personalities, learn how to show some emotion. Learn how to give God some real glory. Yeah. Don't quit, quit, quit trying to be so cool. You know what I'm trying to say? Because, see, you, you, see, because, see it's okay to cry. Because when you cry, God, and get dealt with your core. Ooh. Some of us come in here, my God, and we just puffed all up in the natural. We don't want, no, we don't want God to penetrate nothing. Yeah. We don't want our significant other. We don't even want our girlfriend that we sitting with, my God, to know, my God, that I'm in pain. So I got to cover it up and talk big and talk that big boy talk and all that old mess, my God. But inside, I'm about to lose my mind. Yeah. Suffering in silence, men and women. My God, remember, I'm talking about the foundation and the root system. Let God go back and heal that place where you was violated at, man. Some of us men right now are struggling with our identity. We don't want nobody to know. We come up in the front with that nasty attitude trying to cover up all that emotional pain yeah. and anger. A lot of us is angry. Black men are angry. Yeah. Some of it we have a reason to be, but a lot of us self-inflicted. Yeah. Yeah. Those that are looking, you're angry. Quit covering up. Deal with your emotions. Show some emotion. Women ain't the only one that's emotional. I'm very emotional. Hey! 
way. Oh my God, it ain't nothing with showing no emotion. I love God. I thank God that he saved my life. I ain't got no problem with letting people know. I love him and I ain't got no problem with telling whoever want to know, my God. I ain't no shame, my God. Down down to tell you, I'm in the gym. I keep zero dollar. No matter what, man, it's Christ on mine, baby. I ain't got no shame because he been too good to me, baby. Some of y'all scared to show that level of excitement and gratefulness. A lot of mine is because I'm grateful. Just grateful. Just grateful, Jill. Never apologize for your love for God. The Bible says, the Bible says those who've been forgiven much, they love much. Have you been forgiven for anything? Somebody stand up and give God some glory. Come on, somebody stand up and give God some glory. Come on and give God some glory. Somebody shout to the Lord. Hey! Hey! Woo, Jesus. Quit being ashamed to show some emotions. Quit being ashamed. That's all I'm trying to say. This man was in a desperate place. Oh, and he showed some emotions. Uh, I'm scared of somebody that won't worship God. I'm scared of a man or a woman, my God, that never come to the altar. I'm scared of a man that I never see when I know you're going through something, but I never see you lift your hand. Be careful, sons, my God, and daughters, my God, when I, find, when I know what you're going through, my God, and I see you sit every Sunday, I see you sit every Wednesday, but you show no tenacity, you show no pursuit, my God, you show no hunger, my God, to get out of what you get out of what you're in, but you always want to talk about your problems, my God. I can't do nothing for you. Get down to this altar and let God do it for you. I can't do nothing for you. I can't fix you, but only God can fix you. Oh, there's only five people that clap. Somebody give God a hand. Yeah, quit looking for the pastor. The pastor can't do it. I can't do it for you. Oh, my God. But it's okay to show some emotion. That's all I'm trying to say. It's okay to show some emotion. It's okay to cry. It's okay. It's okay to let your guards down. If you're hurting, Andre, pastor, I'm hurting. Andre, I'm hurting. It's okay. It's okay, y'all. It's okay. I'm keep redundant. It's okay to show some emotion. Not only to your brother and your sister, but to God. Oh, Jesus. Boy, God had me on them. Look at the next thing this man did. This is how he stayed connected. He he prayed. He he was emotionally caught. Who don't you know it's one thing to be, it's one thing to be physically shamane. It's another thing to be emotionally connected to God. Oh, my God, you're like a dead corpse. No, nothing move you. Nothing move you. Have God done anything for you? Do you got any reason to give God some glory? Oh, my God, do you got any emotion behind what God has done for you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, boy. Brother Boy, when I think about it, if the men in your group, my God, stays clean and sober for two days, they ought to be giving God some glory. Ah, if you ain't drunk no alcohol for one day, you ought to be giving God some glory. Yeah. My God. Mm. I'm sorry. I got to make sure y'all understand. Oh, my God. Every time one o'clock rain, the phone rang, you usually let them come over. But the last week, you ain't been answering the phone. You ought to give God some glory. Yeah. Hey, you to close the door that sexual demon. Give God some glory. Yeah. Amen, baby. Amen. I don't know. Amen. Hey! Some of y'all got a lost your tenacity for God. God ain't getting better, you're getting bitter. Stay emotionally connected and break that bitterness off for you. Oh my God. I won't be strange to you. Why is Pastor Holly? Why is he doing that? Because he's emotionally connected to God. Ooh, Jesus. Let me shift. Oh, he also prayed intelligent. Now let me act. Or are you? <laughs> he was very intelligent with his prayer. Oh, God, why have thou forsaken me? God, what did I do to deserve this? I'm glad I don't sin like other people sin, God. He directed his prayer. This is intelligent. He directed his prayer towards God. Who are you pointing your prayer to? Who are you really believing in when you talk to God? 
Are you really talking to the Jehovah? Yahshua, King of Kings. Who are you really talking to? Do you got pointed focus? Do you got pointed focus? Do you got pointed focus in your prayer life? Well, this psalmist was very intelligent. He directed his prayer towards God and God alone. He called out to God who hears and answers the prayers of his children. Write down Jeremiah 33.3. Formulate you something off of this. Ask me, Jeremiah. My God, 33 3, ask me, and I will tell you remarkable secrets. You don't know about things to come. God says, Ask him. He told Jeremiah, Ask him. I'm going to show you some stuff. Some of us are scared to really ask God because we don't really want to know the answer. We don't really want to know God. We will say, God, I really don't want to know him. I'm just going to tolerate him because I really don't want to know. He's going to be like the last three. So I'm just tired of starting over. So I don't even want to know what he's really like. I surely ain't going to ask him. Yeah, yeah. I know it is Bible. Do you really want to know? Because God just told you in his word, ask me. I will show you things that you don't even know. That's revealed revelation. That's what that's called. That's revealed revelation. God, you better start asking and inquiring and asking God about the people that's coming into your life. Quit just accepting people. And start saying, God, show me this person's core. That means God going to show you the inside. God going to make you look at their foundation. Oh, my God, you're trying to make yourself fit. My God, somewhere where you don't even fit. Their foundation and capacity can't even large enough to handle you. You got to dumb down yourself to make them feel. Come on, you better ask somebody. Oh, that better stay. You got to dumb down yourself. My God, just to fit in with this person, man or woman, relationship or not relationship. You're dumbing down yourself because you're trying to make yourself fit somewhere where your capacity is too large. That's why I'm strange on another level, son. Don't dump down yourself. Ask God to show you who you got in your circle. That person you spend the most time talking to, I, I'm not talking about just boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm talking about the people you communicate with on a consistent basis. Say, God, show me. And when he show you, don't be afraid to make a decision after he show you. Because when God reveals something, let me give you some context. Let me teach you. Because anytime God shows you and I, I and you something, it's for the sole purpose to add to or change. See, we want God to show us stuff, but then when he reveals it to us, we don't do nothing. God just don't reveal stuff to you for you to stay the same. When God reveals something, it's because he's ready for you to move. He's ready for you to shift. Shifting is not always bad. It's time, he may show you you have outgrown this. Your capacity is, 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 is too large for this. It's time to shift. That's a good thing. Yeah. Why you want to stay here when they can't handle you? And you wonder why it used to be good and it used to be fun, but now it's grievous. Oh, my God. So, oh, you, the grace has lifted. <laughs> it's time to shift, my God. It don't fit no more, baby. I've mean, outgrown you. Oh, my God. I've outgrown you. You don't fit no more. Yeah. Quit trying to make yourself fit with people in places that you don't fit no more. That's why you're frustrated. God, I trust you even though I can't trace you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Four times God is referred to as Lord. Oh, Sister Johnson, when I put this together, I thought about you right here. Four times in these scriptures. Write down this. Verse number one, verse number nine, verse number 13, and verse number 14, verse number 1, verse number 9, verse number 13, and verse number 14. He cried out as he prayed to God, his first words, Dominique, was Lord. Oh, my God, you need to learn how to understand you're dealing with the king of kings, the lords of lords. Come on, come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Mm, he's intelligent. He addressed the king as Lord. Oh, my God, how are you approaching the king? Are you trying to dump down God? Are you trying to bring God down to flesh? Are you trying to bring God down to your five senses? This is the king. The earth is his footstool. Don't nothing, my God, escape by my God, his, his all-knowing eye. Nothing. He controls the universe. He's in control of China. He's in control of Japan. He's in control of America. He knows what's going on in Oakland. He knows what's going on in Sacramento. He knows what's going on in the Bahamas. He knows what's going on in Hawaii. God is in control at all times. He's never not in control. How are you handling somebody as powerful as I just decreed? 
How you handling somebody like that? That's always in control. He's never, Joyce, out of control. And so if God is never out of control, what we going through ain't escape God. God is in control. He's the one orchestrating stuff. It's painful? Good. It's preparing you for where you're going. He know what it's going to take. He know how long it's going to take. And he know who to send to make it even more painful. And when he deliver you out of that, he's going to send you to some more because he's molding you, shaping you. Let him put his hands on you. He's God. How are you approaching Lord? How are you approaching King? How are you approaching Yahweh? How are you approaching Jeho Jehovah? Don't bring him down. Keep him lifted. Set your mind on him. Set your prayers heavenward. Set your focus heavenward. Faith is up. Remember the, the woman with the issue of blood, she reached in the natural horizontal, but her faith was vertical. And Jesus never touched her, and she was healed. See, when you understand you're dealing with the king and that the king has the key and he controls everything, you'll be very mindful. I'm going to even use the word, you'll be very careful and, and studious and timid. I'm approaching a consuming fire. Hebrews describes him. He's a fire. And so therefore, I can't approach this, this consuming fire. I can't approach this king. I can't approach this person, my God, any kind of way. Also, this same person that we're talking about has the power in one decision to change my whole destiny. Yeah. Everything I've been struggling with from my childhood to now, in one decision, he can shift it overnight. And that what used to be on top of you is now under you. Yeah. He has that much control. So wouldn't, wouldn't you think that I need to approach this person that, that controls my whole destiny? That I would have some more reverence? That I would reverence the king? That I, will, that I will show him, my God, that I appreciate, my God, the sacrifice, my God, and the beating and the bruising and all the hell he went through, my God, so that I can be free, so I can say that I got victory. Oh, my God. Would that make you love him? The Bible says those who's, who's been forgiven much, they love much. Uh, God been too good to you. Can your love increase? Can your honor and respect for the Lord? I can understand you not respecting me, but can you respect God? The one that made death be still in your life. The one that healed you from cancer. The one that healed you from that sexual disease. The one that, my God, when you lost your mind, gave your mind back to you. Can you not honor the king? Oh, my God. Can you not honor the king? Can you not honor the king? Can you not honor the king? Mm. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry. Lord, the word Lord means Jehovah. That's what it means, Jehovah. It's the name that God refers to, covenant keeper. Covenant keeper. Write that down. Because you're serving a God that only operates in covenant. He do not operate outside of covenant. Thank you, late Dr. Miles Monroe. That made me understand that God is a God of covenant. You think about a covenant. It's not contract. That's when I preached many years ago at Greenwood. My God, are you, on co are you in covenant or are you on contract? Many people that go to churches, Jill, my God, is on contract. Contracts are made to be broken. If I like the contract, I submit. If I don't, I won't. That's contract. In covenant, you don't get to treat the king, Jehovah, like that. Yeah. Ooh, my God, change the way you approach the king. That helped me learn how to apply the scriptures. Because now I'm dealing, my God, with God from a kingdom mindset and not a church mindset. People that go to church deal with contracts. People from the kingdom is covenant. Different mindset. Kingdom people operate off of covenant. They understand covenant, my God, is non-negotiable. When you're in covenant with the king, Jehovah, my God, it's things when you're in covenant, my God, you don't get to do. There's certain rules and laws and statutes and commands you don't get to disobey when you're in covenant with the king. Oh my God, what am I talking? But when you serve, the, try to, that's what you're doing, trying to serve the king out of contract, you pick and choose. Oh, that applies, I don't want to do that this time. Uh, uh, that don't apply right there. That's old test, that's new test. Uh, he didn't really mean that. You, know, you negotiate, how can you negotiate with a God that set the covenant? He don't operate outside the covenant. You need to grasp it. If you don't grasp nothing else, I say, God does not operate outside the covenant. He don't go against himself. Many of us is frustrated because we're trying to get God to do something that he won't do because he's bound 
by his covenant. He's bound by his covenant. He's not bound by church. He's not bound by our feelings. He's not bound by our pain. He's not controlled by your tears and my tears. He know who touched you. He know who molested you. I'm not being insistent. He know, my God. So when you come down here, or when you sit back there, or whatever you do at home, my God, you got to do it in covenant. That's right. People of covenant do Christ. People of contract do church. Somebody ought to post that right there. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I ain't never said it like that. <laughs> Jehovah, his name also means he's a God that never fails. Write that down. Oh, let me move. I'm almost through. He also never deserts, deserts, deserts. He's also able, and he can do the impossible. He's a covenant keeper. He never fails. He never will leave you. He never deserts you. My God, he's able. My God, he can do the impossible, and he's anywhere, at any time, in any place. He's all places, anytime, anywhere. What do you need him to be? What do you need God to be right now tonight? See, this man, even though he was living a cold-blooded situation, he kept his connection. And so number two, point two, after your connection, you got to stay committed. Commitment and connection go hand in hand. God reversed it in 6 o'clock prayer. And I was praying. I said, okay, I can't stay committed if I don't stay connected. And then I told myself, I can't stay uh, connected if I don't stay committed. Right. My commitment should lead to my connection. And my commitment, my connection should lead to my commitment. See what I'm trying to say? I'm connected, now I'm committed. You're connected to going off of Christ, but are you committed to going off of Christ? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're connected to church, but are you committed to the covenant keeping God of church? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, sir. Make your point. Yeah. Okay? God is silent. This is going to bless you and we're going to push. God is silent in this Psalms. This is interesting. I didn't get the title until I was at 12 o'clock prayer and I was laying right here. Over hours of change and usually when I make my way up, I get back right here and I just stay right here another 10, 15, 20 minutes and God dropped it on me because at that time I couldn't get it. Kim said, just go pray. Back away from me. So I came in to prayer and I started praying. And I was down there over an hour in the change and Pastor Ron was over there and I think Shante and whoever else was over there somewhere. And I was right and I made my way right here. And I began to decree, Lord, miracles, signs and wonders from this pulpit. I began to uh, receive all of the, the, the great impartations and from the great people that stood on this platform right here. And I began to say, God, talk to me. God, talk to me. He'd always been talking to me. And he dropped it. I can't trust you, but I trust you. Some things you get in prayer. I can't trust you, Toya, but, but I trust you. Some of you can't trace God. And he got you just like that for a reason. I'm going to show you and get you out of here because I need this. I can't leave y'all hanging. Watch this. But that's how I got the title. Right there. Right there. Right here. Yeah. Everybody else doing whatever they doing. I ain't, I ain't, I'm just saying. You at work, y'all ain't talking about it. I'm just saying. But I'm right here. I got to be ready to feed y'all. Y'all won't just accept anything. <laughs> so, 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 so. Let's go back. God is silent in the Psalms. He does not respond to the brokenhearted cry of this man. God does not even give this man a hint that he's listening. That does not indicate that he didn't curse. That right there. Yeah. Do TJ, we do. That right there just spoke to somebody. Somebody need to receive that and ask God to forgive you. Just because God ain't spoke, don't mean he don't care about you. Some of you didn't curse God because you feel like he don't care about you. You need to repent tonight. Just because he ain't spoke, don't mean he don't care. Remember, God is a trainer. God is a trainer for this here. What is this, y'all? Okay. Oh, y'all with me? Ooh, I love my church. Watch this, watch this, watch. It simply means that God chose not to answer him. That's all it means. God chose not to answer you. 
God reserved that right. I just told y'all who he was. I just told y'all he's king. He's Lord. He controls everything. Lazarus, he, he, he wasn't controlled by Mary. If you would have came, they tried to blame Jesus. He wouldn't have died. Jesus said, I ain't worried about what you're talking about, girl. I control that. I'm going to stay another two days now. You trying to control me? I'm going I'm to show you who's in control. So I ain't coming now. I'm going another two days over here and kick it. I'm going to go over here and kick it, eat and hang out and heal somebody else. I ain't worried about Lazarus. You know why? Because he knew he had the power to control it. See, that's what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. You're stressed out and you're, you're trying to get God to do something. That he's already control of. You can't move God out of flesh. Just because you get impatient and you want it now, that don't mean God going to move. You better read Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's a time and a place for everything. God moves when he want to move. You can't control God because you're crying and slotting and tripping. You need to ask God to forgive you. Because he reserves the right not to speak. Because he's God. And he's God all by himself. Whether you praise him or not, he's still God. Whether you pay your tithes and give offering or not, he's still God. Whether you worship him or not, he's still God. Whether you show any emotions or not, he's still God. He do not cease from being God because we have our temper tantrums. Mm, let me move. We are told that the psalmist does begin to question God's silence. Verse 14 says, oh Lord, he says, why do you reject me? You can identify, so can I. I too have said the same thing. God, why are you not talking to me? If I've done anything, show me. Show me the sin. Show me whatever. Who oh my God. What is it, God? Why? Show me. Show me, God. I'm trying to do what you asked me to do. Show me. I'd have real talks with my Lord and Savior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, Jesus. Mm. Tell me unless I'm walking away and you can deal with me later. I didn't talk to him straight up like that. I can't take no more. My God. Mm. Oh, Lord, why do you reject me, he says. Why do you turn your face? Away from me. But as I said, who can blame the psalmist? He's in a cold-blooded place. Just like you and I right now. It's hard, church, listen to me. I'm about to, to carry on when it seems that the heavens have turned to brass. When the heavens is closed. Thank you up top. I see y'all. God is speaking. I'm coming in for a land. It's hard to keep going when you've been going for 15 years and he still ain't got no better. It took, it took 13 hell for, for, for me to even have show my wife a glimpse that it was going to be better. 13 years of intense addiction. Some of us can't go through nothing for three days and ready to quit on God. And she wasn't even saved. And she 2,000 and something miles away from California and from, from her home with no family here. All her family is in Sacramento. 13 years of hell. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't quit. Remember, I taught y'all Sunday. It says, just on the other side. Just on the other side. Watch this. Watch this now. I'm with you. I'm trying to encourage you, my God. Uh, uh, he never gives up, though. Have you quit on God? Don't you know you can still be in church and have quit on God? Let me tell you, and I'm moving because I know time. You know how you quit on God? When you come to church and you sit in your seat, wherever you sit at, and you have Purposed, keyword purposed in your mind that I ain't doing nothing. Nobody got to ask me for nothing. I, if I want to stand, I stand. If I want to worship, I worship. If I want to give, I give. You have set your mind. Your heart is hard as a brick wall. You have quit on God. You could be in the church house every Wednesday, Sunday, and Monday and have quit on God because you quit right here. When you refuse, to do what God has told you to do. When you refuse to shovel sheep down, when you re refuse to offer your gift to the body, God connects a family together, a body of Christ together, because everything that you have inside you, this church needs it. And when you choose not to do anything, you choose to get offended, you choose to do whatever it is that you choose to do, and you tell yourself, I ain't doing nothing, you didn't quit on God. You think you didn't quit on me in the church, but you quit on God. Because what you're telling God is I control who I am. You don't. <laughs> Repentance again tonight. Because you can't be exposed, and God can't reveal stuff to you like that, and then we don't do nothing about it. Yeah. Remember, we deal with the inside foundation. Jesus said the kingdom is not external, it's internal. Right. God has to clean up the internal so the external can manifest. It's internal work that's going on inside this piece of real estate. Yes, Lord, 
God did not answer. I'm finished. A single one of Job's questions. God did not even answer Jesus. When he cried out on the cross, God, why have thou forsaken me? He didn't answer Job, and he didn't answer himself. <laughs> Ooh, come on, somebody. So if he didn't answer Job, and he didn't answer himself on the cross, oh, but now you're more important than him, huh? Well, that's him. He need to answer me. Think about that. Watch this. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Mm. God's greatest work, watch this now, often accomplished, is often accomplished in silence. Write that down. Please write that down. I'm about to, I'm moving. His greatest work is often accomplished in silence. Another word that I've taught y'all, for that's been with me for some years, God does some of his greatest work in the valley, not on the mountains. In silence. In silence. His greatest works are accomplished in silence. God did not answer Job until the end of the book of Job. Chapter 42, verses 1 through 17 is finally when God spoke to Job. And when he spoke, he spoke like thunder. And he had a few things to say to Job and also to his friends. Our duty is not to question God, but to conform to his image. If you let him keep his hands on you and you trust him like we say we do, then we know that all things is working out for the good. There are some things that we are dealing with that appear to be extreme. Please write that down, extreme. Humiliating, severe, exhaustive. Oof. They appear to be. The devil wants you to think that they these things I just named. But when they're in God and you connected to God, and you're communicating with God, point one and two, I'm just giving it to you now. Those things right there ain't what they appear. Yes, Lord. Come on. Speak, Lord. <laughs> they, they, they're not what they appear. Let me tell you what they are. This is what they really are. Write down, they are light. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 says, For our present troubles, listen to me, are small and won't last very long. Yet, 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 yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them all and will last forever. Second Corinthians, whatever you're going through compared to the glory that awaits you and I, and he ain't just talking about heaven either. Oh my God, you're looking at it. The glory? <laughs> oh my God, that awaits. The stuff you're going through right now, it's light. <laughs> Oh, my God, I wish I had time. Oh, the, the, the pain, the anguish, I, all that you're going through, it's light, it's light, it's light, it's light. It's producing something in you. It's producing something in you. Daughter, my God, all the school stuff is producing something in you. It's producing something in you. Oh, my God, it's, it's, it's light. Oh, I know I feel painful. Oh, it's light to you, Pastor, but you ain't the one going through it. I know I'm not. I'm going through what I'm going through, and it's light. It's light. It's light. It's light. Okay, okay. Now watch this. Watch this. The work of, it, it, it also, it, it, the work of God in our lives. Okay, this, that was it. That's the last one. It's also the work, write that down, of God. The things you're going through, the troubles, everything that this psalmist was going through was the work of God. God held his peace. He never spoke a word because it was all the work of God. Oh, the Spirit of God set y'all up early in the text, my God. Everything you're going through is the work of God. And God is silent because he can't speak. He can't speak. He won't speak. He ain't moving. It's the work of God. It's the work of God. It's the work of God. Somebody look at your name and say, it's the work of God. Let me give you some scripture. Familiar. Write down Romans 8, 28. It's all working together for the good. Amen, y'all loving this. Amen. They serve to lift us. Write it down. They serve to lift us. I know I went over, but I had to give it to you. This stuff you're going through is going to lift you. Let me give you this. Everybody look at your pastor when you get a chance. Notice I said it serves 
If you think about it, to look at me, y'all, please, don't miss the revelation. It lifts. Say it again. It lifts up. The stuff you're going through serves a purpose when you connect it and commit it. It moves you up. Everything, Jill, that you have learned about me and my former life, everything that y'all know about Jew, Jew, God is served. Think about it. So what you're going through is your testimony sharing, your pain, your disappointment. They dropped you. They molested you. They touched you. They fired you. Whatever it's going if you stay connected and committed to God. Hey! Ooh, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Write down 2 Corinthians 12, 10. This is the scripture to that. And I'll close the book. That's why Paul says, I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecution, and trouble, Paul says, that I suffer for Christ. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Here's a man that suffered mega, major, mega, mega, major persecution. And he closed the book. And he says, all this stuff has lifted me. Started from the bottom, now I'm here. Who, <laughs> my God. Lift you. Everything that you're going through is going to lift you. Every heartache, every trial. Even the stuff in your youth. He can't lift you if you don't let him deal with it. Some of us need to take tonight and say, God, go back where it first happened. I give you permission to go back. Take me mentally, take me emotionally back. To where I first got violated. Yeah. Violation ain't, don't mean molested or touch. Violation means a whole lot of things to a whole lot of people. Yeah. The first time your teacher told you you were sorry. I remember they told Dr. Miles Monroe you uh, look like a monkey. He testified at 1519 West Pine. He said you look like a monkey. He used to live on the dirt road. His house was on the dirt in the hut in the Bahamas. He says, you're, like, you're a monkey. You ain't going to never be nothing. They used to make fun of him and laugh at him. The king, doctor. <laughs> Whoo, my God, he went for nothing. Oof. He took over to the right. Ah! The man sat with kings. The man counseled. My God, people that make the, I'm serious, y'all, make the world yeah. move. He would show us pictures and stuff of the type of people. People, my God, they got the power. Who, my God, to shift countries. They would fly them in. And then he got to the point where he had his own jet. He told the Lord, I'm tired of taking off my shoes. I'm serious, y'all. He said, I'm tired of these people patting me down and, 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 and raping me. He said, I need my own. And they paid for it with cash. He ain't robbed nobody. He didn't manipulate nobody. You know what I'm trying to say? His church right now, my God, with Gio, Gio, them, they, it's still operating right now. Still moving forward. Right now, that's legacy. Foundation was built strong. Oh, my God, before he crossed over, he had leadership that been with him over 30 plus years. Yeah. Oh, my God, who heard, does that in this day of time? Yeah. One leadership for 30 plus years. Yeah. Same leadership. Candy, my God, that be up her ministry, she was the praise and worship leader for Dr. Miles Miro. You don't understand the gifts God has gave yeah. going off of Christ because God knows we want kingdom and we don't want church. Gia, Dr. Miles Miro, daughter, the one that just walked out of the drama. Who God has sent me the remnant, Janice? Yes, who am I got of the doctor who I love, who has taught me how to what kingdom is all about? Yes, yes. God loves me. Yes, yes. And so if God loves me, woman of God, I've never seen you, but he loves you too. Yes. And what he has done for me, he'll do for you. Yes. Will you let it lift you? Everything that made you cry, everything, as the woman of God says, that keeps you up at night and keeps you where you can't sleep, will you let it lift you? 
You notice I said that God can do the impossible anytime, in any place. Y'all remember I said that? So we go over to Will Rogers United Methodist Church. They told the people of God that going over Christ needs a van. So they took up a big offering, gave the whole offering to the going over Christ family. Then Pastor, Pastor Bucks, how you say his name? Bush Kirk comes to sit down. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, if you're looking. But everything I say is for the glory yeah. of the Lord. It's not to boast, not to brag, but to show the people yeah. that God is able to do the impossible yeah. and he can use who he want, when he want, and where he want. When he want to bless you. When you're connected and committed. Not just in church, outside the church. So he walked over to me, Lonzo. Sit down, because Will Rogers, they got rail, rails. He sat down. He said, Pastor. I said, yes, sir. After a great big old altar call, how soon would you use the van if you had one? He said, immediately. I said, come April the 13th, I have a whole lot of OIU stu students that need to be picked up. They all be back from school. And my God, and so we're going to need to be able to pick them up. I got people that need that call the church, want rides, my God, to the church. He said, yeah. He said, abiding harvest, church, and broken arrow. We just bought a brand new van, leather, DVD players, and all that. He said, just like I'm sitting, Sharon. Remember, God could do the impossible. Whenever he wants to, anytime he get ready. If you stay committed and you stay connected. Even in the midst of trials, even when your marriage is on display, even when your kids ain't here, God can, even when you're going through hell, I'm just saying, uh, can you stay down? When your faith is being tested, can you stay faithful? Can you stay holy? Can you stay sanctified? Will you stay in love with him when you're going through hell? Can you keep pushing? Do you got your mind made up that you're going on to see what the end of a same life going to be like? No matter what you're going through, can you stand? So God sent a blessing, and he sat in my face. And he told me, we just got this new van. And when you get back from Chicago, let's talk. But I want you to know tonight, that was Sunday night, that every other, watch this, Sunday, the van that we just got is yours. He could do the impossible. See, I was going to share this with you later on, because see, yeah, but, 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 but I got to make sure I validate God's sermon. He could do the impossible anywhere, anytime. He said, so the van that we just got every other Sunday, here's the climax. You have it. All you need is somebody with a CDL license. I said, well, that goes to Rob. I said, I said, Mahogany, he yeah, introduced him to Mahogany. I just had a meeting with him. By the way, every other Sunday, to make sure my daughters and sons, that's going to be, who Lord loves me. Oh, he loves me. Excite me. It's going to be, just watch me. Get here early. Don't be coming late. I promise you. Watch this, Toya, until I get you home. Hey, until I get you your own somebody give God the glory hey. all your pastor's doing from April the 30th of 1995 in the 6 by 9 prison cell Lorenzo Estate committed and connected when they said I wasn't going to make it when they said I was a nobody 
when he said it's just jailhouse religion. Just doing what I'm called to do. Serving my gift, Sheila. And somehow, some kind of way, God touched that man's heart. And this is what you got. And he told me I am privileged that you will be using my van with my church name on it. Picking up people, bringing them to your church until we get you home. It's called favor, the one. It's called faith. It's because God knows what he's getting ready to do. He don't give you this level of prop property to be playing games. If you're playing, I can't get nobody to say nothing about that. Everything I went through in life, even since I've been a pastor, not to become prideful, but to be grateful. So we're going to take care of some kingdom business real quick. Because I know all of us got something we need to talk to God about. And so we just going to come down. If you don't have to, you can exit the building. But if God has spoken to you and you say, that's me, I need to get there. Then just come on down. Don't labor the time. Make your way to the altar. Don't be cool. Come connect emotionally, men and women, to God. Connect emotionally. Don't just come down and bow your knee. Bow your heart to God. Oh, Jesus. <laughs>